Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to Python Refresher for Learners. The goal of this workshop is to introduce or review Python as a general programming language and print the Zen of Python or its guiding principles. We will also write and run a simple Python program with print function together with uh, formatting and distinguish interactive shell and a Python file. So you have to introduce or review Python introspection with type and ID and ask guidance as well using the help function to introduce Python uh, data types, scalar data types, you have integer, float, boolean, complex, and non-type, and non-scalar data structures like sequences, set, sets, and mappings. To recall fundamental programming ideas uh, like objects, variables, literals, assignments, interpreter, operators, comments, uh, indentation, expressions, keywords, errors, and naming conventions in the context of Python programming. So we will also learn how to import Python modules and be aware of miscellaneous features like special characters and special assignment operators you also have we will also describe the and implement basic program control flow like branching conditional statements and iteration uh, while and for loops so this is the first installment in the next installment we'll explore collections so first off what is a computer a computer performs calculations and remembers the result so that's the basic function of a computer as a device and python programming as a general purpose language will enable computations and storage of that results so python is a high level interpreted and open source language so high level that means it's closer to the application or the human level as opposed to the low level which is closer to the machine uh, like assembly language so with python there are many libraries or modules that are already available so you have numpy pandas tensorflow if you are dealing with artificial intelligence and so on you could have uh, multiple fields. Uh, if you're learning Python, you could use it for science. You could use it for uh, computing, data engineering, um, artificial intelligence, and even trading. You could also use Python programs. Uh, automation as well. Python is very popular. So program is nothing but a sequence of definition and commands so the visuals here is you'll have a step one you could think of uh, this as uh, being st step one okay and you're going to chain the steps okay down to step two okay and continue with a top down approach so from top to bottom you are reading codes sequence per sequence and interpreting okay so the python interpreter will interpret these commands so interpreter is a program that reads and executes commands in python because python is an interpreted uh, language it's also open source so the community it's a dynamic language and the community is contributing to it so that's very evident because of the availability of many libraries. So how to run a Python code? At least for this workshop, uh, the precondition is you have already installed uh, Python uh, in your system. If you have not done so, then uh, please uh, use uh, either you download the in Python interpreter in the website uh, python.org 
the latest interpreter or you could in my case i'm using uh, the anaconda distribution uh, which is composed of the interpreter the python interpreter itself and together with the uh, packages uh, ide like spider you could also have the jupyter notebook already where you could run python commands uh, as well so uh, just google search anaconda and uh, download the installer for you to be able to follow uh, this workshop uh, after you download anaconda uh, you will be able to open uh, ides like spider so if you have uh, anaconda already you could open uh, spider anaconda uh, ide so this part here is where you write the python scripts so you could uh, write the that py files here okay or if you choose to just compute values and interact with the python interpreter you could also use the shell okay or the interactive uh, python shell in this case in which you could you could put or issue commands uh, like uh, print so if you want to print uh, hello world for example Okay, so it automatically executes the line of code after you type it. So that's the interactive shell. Uh, however, if you're programming it in a text file, then you need to save it in the Python file. After saving it, then you could just uh, print or you could just execute with the run button. So after pressing the run button then you will also see the result okay again uh, what enables this uh, ide is your anaconda distribution if you download it the built-in ide there is spider okay although in our case uh, we will be using sublime but you could still you could still follow the workshop even if you're using uh, maybe Jupyter Notebook, uh, which is also included in the Anaconda distribution. Uh, like if you want to run your uh, the commands that I will issue in Python shells, you could also follow using. and it after i type enter it will execute that command i could also do that in my script file so this is actually a script file uh, by the way the other term for this uh, interactive shell you could also call this as repl or the re read if await print loop so this will uh, read and then evil wait and then print the command the python commands that you issue so that's the other term of the python shell or repl so print okay we have explored it uh, right now and uh, what we really did is to run it in an interactive shell i could also run it in as a script here so if i write a script so as a drill uh, feel free to try it yourself as well since this is a workshop and uh, open your ide could be pycharm or spider if you have installed anaconda or you could open your jupyter notebook and uh, run a cell so you could write hello world in your own system so in my case if i write if i write it here in the script so I could have a print 
So I will print hello world. And take note the the difference with this one is I'm writing it into a a dot Python file. So you're writing the script and saving it as a file. However, in the interactive uh, Python run, you're just interacting with the uh, interpreter. So the idea is you're just typing commands and and pressing enter. So the advantage if you're writing it in a .py script is you could have multiple lines and uh, you will be able to uh, come up with complicated algorithms or solutions to some problems that you are uh, currently solving so but in interactive mode all you have to do is um interact okay the idea is just to run a certain snippet uh, and it's you could see the output immediately so i hope you see the difference that the in the interact in the uh, interactive mode so you are left with uh, one liner codes uh, or it could be multiple lines as well but the idea is you you cannot program a complicated um, application using the interactive shell all you have to do is uh, to test a certain command uh, just to see what's the output okay so that's the difference so if i try to run this script okay let me run the python hello world and in sublime i will simply press ctrl b so as you could see the output here is uh, hello world okay so that's the output of my script uh, that py file okay so that's the answer as well for our first drill okay which is to write the program or a script that prints hello world so we're just checking our system implementation so if you want uh, multiple line codes if you notice i enclosed these comments using the triple single code notation and if you enclose it with that then that will be disregarded by the interpreter so the comments will not be read as code they will not be interpreted they will not be executed so uh, that's very convenient so if you have uh, some documentation for documentation purposes you're writing uh, just a description of the application that you're making okay just enclose it in the comment and it's a good practice to have comments in a program if you want single line comments then you could execute or you could already print hello world so that's the idea while in other languages like c it will take some time but there are advantages to c as well like in embedded systems and all so these languages have their own purpose and you cannot say that this language or that language is the best for all problems okay so help asking for help uh, this is one very important feature of python so you could come up with a guidance uh, from uh, python like for the print command you could issue the command help for the print uh, function and it will give you the documentation so help is a built-in function okay and it prints the values to a certain stream in this case the stream is standard output by default and there are uh, you could separate your strings using comma operator so let's try that so if if you explore the print command here so you could separate okay like hello and then you could actually assign something to that set okay or the separator in this case uh, the default is um blank space but if if you want to eliminate okay for example if you want to eliminate that blank space 
you could say print a separator which is blank and in that case there is no space in between or you could twist it a bit by having multiple spaces and it's already farther from each other as well so more documentation will be the end so currently if you simply issue the command uh, print it without any arguments okay it will give you one line or one full line okay uh, like this one uh, one full one full line okay so it's as if giving you a blank line in this case uh, what if you don't want that uh, like for example what if you well uh, print you want to print with without proceeding to the next line so you could also explore that part okay let's see okay let's print in the world in a different manner okay like what if uh, this is my first print and then in the next next line i'm also printing so what do i get here i will get hello world in two different two different lines so what if you want to use two prints but you want to you want it to remain in a single line so you could set a new line you could just you simply want a blank space as your end okay this also works and if you notice the uh, new output now okay the new output now is a single line even if we're using two different prints so that's that's how you you override the default values like the ending and the separation in a print function okay and again let's recall that that's made possible by the guidance of help function so if if you're a bit confused of a certain uh, python function just don't hesitate to issue the command help uh, just like what we did with print so we were able to see the documentation which is very informative it gives us options in how to uh, manipulate the print function okay so i could push and slash or backslash if we include now the backslash operator we could get a slightly slight warning in our ide okay or in our text editor so there, there's there's a warning now okay that we have end of line while scanning so how can that be end of line for the double code so the idea is if you uh, put some space now and let's run this again okay you're able now to to print the backslash operator uh, how about the the code and this time around double click for example hello world uh, i want to enclose hello world with my problem okay then you cannot do this approach okay because this will give you an error okay another syntax error but you could use the escape character uh, backslash and uh, this will work so it will give you the code that you want another approach uh, the more popular approach i believe i usually use this a lot if i want to print the code or the double code then i want i will set okay just a subtlety of the language you could feel free to play with it in the workshop so this so this import this okay will give you the guiding principles of python the zen of python by tim peters so beautiful is better than ugly explicit is better than implicit simple is better than complex uh, but it, if it has to be complex it complex will be better than complicated and flat is better than 
uh, nested. Uh, in the future workshops, we will explain uh, this, the meaning of this guiding principles. Okay, but for now, uh, just enjoy the poetry behind the Python language. These are very significant. And this continue until today as the guiding principles of how the uh, Python as a living language developed. Okay? So this is the Zen. The Python, the Zen of Python. Uh, Python is actually an object-oriented uh, language uh, or um, in the more recent terminology you could consider it as hybrid uh, with functional uh, but uh, for our purpose we will introduce it as um, as simple as possible all data in Python program is represented either by objects or its relationships so you have what is an object in the context of programming or in the context of python an object is composed of an identity so in python you could express this identity as the memory address of a particular object can be considered as the identity you could also have the data type so uh, there are uh, primitive data types you have the float you have the integer boolean complex and so on you have value so this is the actual um, value attribute or the data okay that the object contains so uh, we will we could give an example later on okay uh, let's proceed with objects identity once it's created, it never changes. And objects whose value can change, okay, they are termed as mutable. So the idea with a mutable object is it is changeable. You could change it. Okay, you could change it. So for the other term, however, uh, there are objects in Python that you cannot change once you have created them and they are immutable and in summary if you have you could recall the term immutable they cannot change you have to destroy the object before you could come up with a new value so the string that we printed earlier is an example so if you print a string variable it's already immutable you cannot change it you have to destroy it before you could change the value so an object can be associated to one or more than one or no names at all so the names that we will utilize here or we could call them as identifiers you could in other programming languages or like uh, c you could call them uh, variables in python as well so you could have multiple variables re referring to one object or it could, it could be more it could be one as well so the data type as an attribute of an object okay it could either be scalar which are indivisible like atomic uh, building blocks or it could be non-scalar uh, which is a data structure in itself scalar types include integer uh, floating point numbers boolean complex numbers and none type so in python we could give uh, examples to these data types like if if i type a whole number here that is an integer uh, any whole number that i type that will be a, uh, an integer and actually you could you could check the type so if you don't believe me you could just issue the command type for introspection uh, the idea is you could check what is the data type of that particular value or variable within the language so what what is the context 
Like Python is considering that object as, in this case, an integer. So if you have a number, a whole number, Python will automatically consider that number as an integer. We could also have um, floating point. Like if I put decimal places here, the type will change. So Python will automatically detect the change. Ah, you have inputted decimal places. So in that case, it's no longer an integer. So it's a floating point number. So you could also have Boolean, uh, like maybe true or false. So if you have true, uh, by the way, this is string if you enclose it in a double quote. So uh, the type of true is Boolean, or it could be false as well. So this is the result if you're comparing, uh, doing a comparison. So Boolean, it could be either true or false only, nothing in between. You could also have complex numbers. Na? Uh, if you're using this in mathematics, so say 1j something or 2j. Okay, where you have the uh, real part. So in this case, the real part and the imaginary part. So the real part is 1. And the imaginary part here is 2. That's the imaginary part. Okay, let's check the data type of this value. So, uh, let me just issue the command type or the function type 2j. Okay, it's complex. So you could you could play with this value like if you if you want to store it in a variable later, you could also call the real part and the imaginary part. So you have also a non type so you could have uh, N-O-N-E. So the non type will uh, signify an initialization of a certain object. Uh, especially if you don't know, uh, for example, you don't know what that object is after you run the code. So it, it, is, it is set dynamically later on. So you have to initialize it with a value non. So this none actually is, you could consider this as nothingness. And in some programming languages, uh, they're using uh, null. Okay. So you could, you'd come up with an analogy to other programming languages like Java or C. So you have non-scalar types as well. Okay, let's check the type of this nan. So the type here is, this is actually nan type. And uh, later on, we'll be able to use this in our application. Okay. So scalar types, uh, there are also non-scalar types, which include uh, immutable sequences, uh, like you have strings, tuples, and bytes so let's just declare uh, some of them uh, you have seen already earlier the hello world okay paired with 90 so you could think of this as a group of values and it is considered as one entity so we could check the type and the type is we should enclose this Okay, the problem here is we did not enclose it with the parenthesis notation. So as you could see, uh, the type here is tuple. They're considered a single entity. So we will discuss tuples in the future workshop. So for now, let's just uh, explore or familiarize the data types that you are available, that is available in Python. You could also have bytes, so like uh, bytes composed of uh, maybe 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, and so on. You could have um, this designation, uh, like B signify, signifies that you are dealing with bytes here. 
And these are the special characters for these values, like for 0, for 1, for 2, and for 3. So th those are the bytes representation. So mutable sequence, again, the difference between immutable, okay, uh, like strings, tuples, bytes, you cannot, you cannot change them. For mutable, uh, mutable data types, however, you have uh, lists. Uh, list can be changed, okay? And the way to designate a list is using the squared bracket notation. Say I have a list of fruits, for example, apples, okay, mango, okay, up. So this is an example of a list. In which you could come up with a list of strings. Um, you could also have different data types in a list. Uh, like for example, what if the other being? Okay, maybe you could have, uh, this is my, or a glass of water. Anyway, let's just use cup. Okay, and... Okay, uh, they're bad definitions, but the idea is I'm storing values here in my dictionary. And you could get uh, the type, okay, uh, the type of this object. And you have dictionary uh, abbreviated as DICT. So in, in summary, the way you uh, utilize the uh, this particular initialization, like the parentheses, if you have recalled, okay, you use it for tuples. Okay, and for the list, if if you recalled, we utilize the squared bracket notation and for the set we utilize the curly bracket and for the dictionary as well okay we utilize the curly bracket but the elements okay they're not simply comma separated okay just like in previous one the the elements are by pairs okay you have a key and a value pair as a data type okay there will be more discussions on those collections later on uh, for now okay what what we're trying to do here is just to introduce these data types so in python okay one distinction that you might notice is that there is no limit in the maximum value so in other languages like c or java you have integer limits okay in python they, uh, that value is limited by your memory uh, at least in all the versions in python okay the previous integer is uh, limited uh, by the max size of a particular so you could import a, a package right now uh, we could import a built-in package uh, just to check something to this one. Number letters is equals to uh, and so okay and for the age so, uh, maybe 10 point something matters okay and the type for the distance will be a uh, floating point of course you could check the id as well uh, it has a unique uh, unique memory address and well i'm required in the drill to print the value so i will simply do that and proceed with boolean so if i have a boolean variable a common practice in python okay is if if you have a boolean character is you prefix it with is or has okay like is valid for example 
and you separate it with separate it with an underscore okay or sometimes depends on your convention sometimes you just put it in one line is valid uh, or has has something say has id or something and then again the values here could either be true or false okay so let, let's just uh, provide some values for our boolean so you could have a boolean which is is valid and let's just assign true okay and then let's print okay the variable is valid and you could just get the type as well uh, the type of this variable a okay, number like uh, this is my number for example if you just separate it with comma number one or number and we have so a b c okay letter okay letter c okay for a car okay say for car so the idea is if you print this variable so my dictionary and you get the values and of course if you get the type it's a dictionary data type now pretty much that's it so you could feel free to explore more with regards to this uh, with regards to this drill when you declare each of the python data types as variables so as you have observed in my naming convention, I'm using lowercase uh, when I declare Python variables. Okay, this these are guidelines, not a strict. So if 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 you violate these guidelines, okay, then your code would still run. Uh, but it will be very helpful for the reader if you if you observe the naming conventions. Okay, like for variables, you should use lowercase. And you put context. You provide context with a descriptive name. So instead of using A, B, um, of course, there are exceptions. Like if you're looping in an iteration context, you, you could use I and J and so on. Uh, but in general, please put context to your variable names. And individual words separate by underscore, so snake case. If you're programming in other languages like Java, okay, they have what we call as the camel case. In camel case, you usually write the variables like um, a camel and then capitalize the next word, okay, the beginning of the next word. And this is your variable, a camel case. In Python, we have what we call a snake case. You just separate the words with underscore. That's the convention. Again, you don't need to strictly follow it. But as much as possible, uh, please to make it a bit readable, your code uh, readable. Just follow the convention. So for example, you could, you could evidently see the difference. So here we are having A without context. It's 3.1416 and so on b 11.2 and c it's just an expression uh, in which you don't know okay what's the meaning uh, however in the next line of code here uh, with the convention being followed you have a context for 3.1416 it's pi you have the context for 11.2 it's radius and for the area you have pi times radius although it's a bit wordy but uh, it's worth the effort when uh, somebody's maintaining your code and of course if if you come back to your code a year later or years later it the context is the better approach because you will be able to understand uh, what you wrote a few years back so in python you have also special keywords uh, that is, you cannot use them as variable names. You have to avoid using them. Um, you could issue help and just 
check keywords. Okay, keywords. Okay, so this will give you the common keywords in Python. So in Python, you have okay, false. They are taken, as I've stated earlier. We are using this for Boolean values. Okay, none, true, and, uh, as, assert, async, await, and so on. So don't worry if uh, there are about 35 values here to memorize. Okay, uh, just issue the command help keywords uh, in the Python shell and you will be able to recall them. So as you move along with your uh, leveling up your Python skill, you will be able to familiarize each of these keywords. Uh, but for now, just remember, do not use them as a variable name. Okay? So to proceed, um in as just in just like any other programming language you have operators which are special symbols for computation or comparison so the most common being the arithmetic operations so you have addition which will give you the sum so let's just give some and you will have five subtraction say five two you will have three Okay, multiplication, 3, you will have 15. Okay, division. So there's two kinds of division in Python. The first one be your normal division, like 3 over 5. Uh, it will give you 0 0.6. Something significant happens here. Uh, to emphasize this part, you notice that if you check the data type for your 3, this is actually an integer. And you divide it with five okay which is also an integer in other languages like c if you do this the result is also an integer in which case 3 over 5 which is 0 0.6 okay will become zero in other languages okay but at least in python uh, what happens is it will convert it into the higher okay if you're really dividing two integers and the result is already afloat okay then python will automatically adjust the result and make make it a float a floating point number so so that it could print 0 0.6 in this case with this particular operation so this is very useful okay but if it so happens that you want to model the integer division okay what is done in other languages you could just use you could just double on the slash so three okay then the result will be zero so this one here is the integer or the floor division if you're using a floor division or integer division uh, here this is the usual division which will give you, in this case, a floating floating point number quotient. Uh, well, the other one, okay, if you check the type, it retains its integer data type from the parents or from the operands. So you have type of uh, 3, 5. Okay, the result still is an integer. Okay, but notably, if you just use a single slash for the division, the result is converted to float. Okay, that's how uh, Python manages division. You could also have an exponent. Now, a common mistake among beginners okay, in exponentiation is they will use the correct symbol. Like if you cube, okay, they will use 3 or this correct symbol. Okay, unfortunately, this uh, correct symbol is, is not exponentiation in python so the way you go about exponentiation is you will use the asterisk operation twice just like you're uh, multiplying twice and it will be considered as an exponent so in python you could also check the 
remainder of a division operator so if you notice uh, we have already done uh, we have already solved the floor division like if you have 30 divided by 5 for example okay you get 2 being the remainder or being the quotient pala so this quotient okay being the quotient 10 over 5 okay you'll have 2 but if you're curious about the you're curious about the uh, remainder then there is also a built-in operator for that okay the operator we call the modulo operator so in the modulo operator you use the percent symbol and to put it simply it will give you the remainder so just the remainder so the idea is if you have 35 the remainder will be 3 okay because after division well you get 2 as a quotient what's left is 3 over 5 and the remainder is 3 so that's how you operate um, with the remainder so this is very helpful if you're detecting an an odd number or odd even number so if it's an even if you get numbers like if two interest in interest and you could you could shop i it through the shop okay which is this could be true or false okay or you could you could buy it online so that's what i'm thinking so you could buy it online so no matter where you buy it okay uh you could buy a dress shop uh, through a physical store or a shop or you could buy it online so in that case you could either you could either do the the two you could either buy something uh, on the shop okay it doesn't present any problems or so in this case with the actual shop or if this is false you did not go to the actual shop but you bought it online then it's still true okay it will only become false if you did not do either so if online is also false you did not bo bought it online you did not bought it through a physical shop then the or condition now will become false and lastly the negation is the not so if you negate that or the negation okay it becomes true and vice versa so if you have not and done by zero error okay like you expect to be specific okay and after we round it to one decimal number it became true okay what's the default rounding for this number okay when we default it with round uh, the default rounding is zero decimal places in which it okay reduces it to zero but when we specify that the you round it okay you can let import math um the import math module okay pi uh, so from math module import pi and then you could just issue the command pi afterwards okay, without needing the prefix the module name as a prefix you could also do that so what does math offer well in our introspection earlier okay i told you that you could use dir to investigate so let's do investigate so you could with math you could use uh, arc sine uh, arc sine her hyperbolic ceiling you could have uh, built-in functions tangent hyperbolic tangent and so on uh, where's the pi data type here so these are just methods so dir in this case will give you uh, this is pi no? math.pi okay data and power you also have and so on so there are plenty of functions that are available to you with math module 
okay to begin with the pi of course in which we will use in the next drill so the expression uh, expression is what you will use when you combine numbers operators and parentheses just like in mathematical expressions so here import the math module uh, in which in our case we already did okay with the import math module in this case import math and then evaluate the area of a circle so area of a circle is pi r squared so pi times radius squared okay so we could we could just assign a radius variable which okay for simplicity let's just put 10 and compute for the area so my uh, area will pi okay so math that pi radius squared okay and then after this i will print my area so print my area to be so area so in this case i'm just having a presentation a string area concatenated with the variable area so three three hundred fourteen point one five nine we're just using the uh pi or we're just using 10 anyway so 10 squared you have 100 and then 100 times pi this is the value that we get you could also compute the sine or cosine using uh, math sine so like for example we let's just compute the the sine of pi so uh, math that sine of pi okay which is i believe zero okay so in this case it will be approximately zero so if you notice the e here okay this e signifies times 10 to the negative 16 now that's a very small number so e minus 16 is times 10 to the negative 16 so that's a an exponential form of the result okay well the cosine how about the pi there's cosine the cosine is negative one i think so let's check that because it's 180 degrees and indeed you get negative one as your cosine pi halves okay 90 degrees so 90 degrees or 90 degrees pi halves radians the cosine is zero and the sine is one okay for 90 degrees so you could play with this uh, you could check out your favorite uh, function using the dir for the uh, math command no you could just explain uh, explore logarithm okay log base 2 and so on so you will be able to familiarize with the expressions and solve your own problems in your own field so input user input okay uh so far what we did is we're just declaring variables assigning literal values to those variables evaluating expression importing uh, modules like math and system modules we did not really interact with the user yet okay we did not get say a value from the user so for that okay uh, for input and output in python we usually use the input function for that okay and it takes an argument uh, like the argument is a prompt to the user or a message to the user like enter something and when you run this okay it will ask the user to enter something that's the prompt and we did not do something with the input yet in which case if it's interactive it will simply echo what the user inputted but if you really want to do something with it like enter your age okay then you need to put it in a variable like enter uh enter your name first variable name okay 
and then let's just say the name okay and hello Sherla okay wrong spelling but uh, the idea you get the idea so the input function okay well get the value that is provided by the user so in this case the user provided sherlock okay wrong spelling in this case uh let's just bear with it and after getting it input will assign okay or this uh, assignment operator will be able to assign the value to the name variable and after that assignment okay we simply printed it in the next line and after printing it we were able to access that particular variable inputted or entered by the user so pretty simple and then i will input my number one to be 20. okay and then num2 okay num2 will be i will input num2 to be 30. and say i want to i want to add the two variables so plus num2 you might expect that it will be 20 plus 30 which is 50. okay but if you if you enter it you're surprised that it's 2030. what happened so if you investigate further and check the type if you have the, if you haven't noticed the single quote if you check the type it's class string and if you use the addition operator in a string operand it will automatically concatenate or it will simply put it side by side so it will be 20 and 30 so that's as simple as it is put it side by side because they are string and it's not what we want so if you really want to input a value like this okay you need a different approach you need typecasting for this because by default by default the input command returns a string so how do we force it to return an integer or a floating number well you will use typecasting for that okay so let's try uh, typecasting so if i input a certain value the typecasting will simply use the data type okay which is for example if it's int okay then use the int keyword or if it's a float use the float keyword so this is for my num1 okay i could also use a, a num2 and then maybe now we are ready to print the result which is okay the sum is equal okay the sum is equals to num1 plus num2 okay x equals to and after that let's compute the area of the search pi r squared so math we did not import math in the script so you could import times radius squared area okay and if we run this okay it will ask for the radius say let's just stick with 10 we're expecting 314 okay the area is 314 so how about the other one the sign okay so for the sign let's take an input for the angle and let's store it to the angle variable and the cosine so print the cosine is uh, 90 degrees over uh, later on to the argument so check the angle okay the angle is let me put values here one point which is 90 degrees 
and the cosine is zero while the sine is one so this time around it's very close to one and very close to zero the cosine is very close to zero okay so pretty much that's it for the drill i advise you to again please try this drill yourselves you could explore with volume and other mathematical formulas that you're familiar with and just try to use calculator or python try to use python as a calculator uh, it looks like at least it looks like calculator in this regard so as you noticed we could do more or we could do better uh, like for example in in the previous program in which uh, i printed these values what if i want just to print the a formatted version like uh, i want the number in its two decimal places precision so in that case i could use a formatted string so the way i go around with a formatted string is within the print okay i could use the f prefix prefix to the double quote in my string and if i want to evaluate a certain expression I will enclose it with a curly bracket so in this case if i really wanted an angle like cosine is six point or zero in this case and then the sign should be in two decimal places okay then in that case i want a formatted string so i will just put f uh, and then evaluate the expression and enclose it with a string so this one full C, I will separate it with comma. Okay, uh, that's the comma that we wanted, for example. So if I print this, the result will be now separated with the comma. If you have a notation for currency, for example, so your currency is... Uh, maybe a certain value with uh, decimal numbers okay and you simply wanted uh, wanted it to to have commas as well and you you want to specify that it should be two decimal places then you could also format it with the formatted string so for the cash you have the comma operator already here okay uh, the comma operator and you could also use the formatting point to f okay to provide two decimal places so what i expect here is there will be comma and there will be two decimal places so if i enter that's exactly what i get so if i if i put dollar sign here uh, just to make it more of a currency uh, bracket okay just do a one-to-one -one comparison from from this part there's already a difference okay the difference started at this part here so in this case we have found out that the precision that our pi provided in the module is actually wrong okay but that doesn't make everything pi everything about pi uh, already say problematic because at a lower precision you could still have your your actual result it will not present any problems at all but if you really want high precision with pi so there are other libraries that could give you that precision so at least we know now that pi in our math module is not really that precise so if you want to print uh, large digits large values of pi then it will not really give you the correct digits because this one is the correct one okay so it should be instead of one one three one one it should be three two three eight four and so on so uh, however in python there are also modules 
additional modules that will provide you with the correct precision. Okay, like for example, the MP math. Okay, if you try to explore MP math, this will give you the high precision pi. So, for example, let's import this one uh, again. Just, uh, to I'm adding a uh, new, so I'm adding more. So it's better to do this in the script. Okay, so we could. Okay, we could do away with. Okay, do away with the one line limitation. So let's uh, play with it. Okay, play with it here. I have a very long message in this case. Okay, and then I want to add more. Okay, but the line is already very long. I need to proceed to the next line. Um, uh, another string. Uh, another message. Okay, however, when I when I run this code, it will give me an error, indentation error, because in indeed indentation is in Python is important. Okay, we will dig deeper on that later on. But the idea here, the indentation is wrong. Because Python is considering this into two lines. So this is the first line and the second line. But indeed, what you meant, what you really meant was it is one line. So uh, to tell Python interpreter that you what you really meant was a, a one line just a single line then you use the you have a class and then you will extend it to a very long line so python or your ide will automatically proceed to the next line and if if you are using that uh, implicitly okay then it will give you no problems so if i run the control b it will still give me the correct one so that is the implicit new next line okay but the python will consider it as just a single line because what you really meant was just pointing it or was just making it a one single line okay that's the implicit okay but you could also make it explicit uh, by specifying the other use of a backslash character besides an escape sequence uh, exponential notation you have seen it earlier when when i inputted say 1 million 1a6 and you will use e for the exponent times 10 to the 6. okay you have infinity as well so you could you could come up with a very large value if you exceed farther okay like maybe 400 so you will have infinity in this case. Or you could force an infinity. Math, you could call math that infinity. Math that infinity. If if you really um if you really need math in your or infinity in your solution. So let's import math so like a uh, four two to the fourth. Python will also give you the result, which is sixteen in this case. And you could also inquire whether your value is an integer. Your floating number is full number. Like 10.0 is this integral. So whether it's is integer. Okay, um, this is a function. So let me call it as a function. And it gives me a Boolean. Uh, this is telling me that uh, the number that I'm inquiring about, 10.0, is a whole number or can be expressed as a whole number so that's the idea of is integer and if you look at the notation here this is a snake case so the, and boolean so the function returns a boolean so just prefix it with is or has and so on so let's give an example of a negative value so if false okay what if the value is 10 point something Okay, 10 point something uh, will give me false. Of course, it could be a variable like 
if x is 23 point something uh, and I'm curious whether x is an integer okay just provide the false in this case so that's very handy uh, if we're checking if we're curious about the number okay, that we're solving whether it's a whole number or not there are plenty of other functions so feel, feel free to explore the python documentation you could just uh, look at the documentation in uh, python.org okay just explore and there, you will know their all information uh, regarding the language so minimum as well if there are multiple values you could look for the minimum okay like if i have a six uh, if i have numbers like 12 maybe 34 45 21 and so on okay, if i want to get the minimum then i could issue the command minimum i could also the i could also issue the command maximum and python will give will return the largest value uh, very handy you could also check the length okay length for that particular uh, in this case we could we could just convert it into a tuple uh, because length will check the sequence nah? how many elements do you have in that particular sequence like in this case we have five elements you could also check the length of a particular string okay like uh, your name is sherlock for example and that sherlock is composed of eight characters just count the characters well if the blank has a character so the idea is 15 okay let's count so s one two okay let's use the marker here so you have one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so that's why you have the length being fifteen so there will be more on the length function later on uh, when we discuss lists when we discuss uh, sec sequences like uh, tuples and so on so there will be uh, strings especially so there will be plenty of use case for length there uh, there is also special assignment operators in python now for some of you if you're a c programmer the expression i plus plus might be familiar to you okay but in python we don't have that um we don't have that abbreviation i plus plus so uh, i plus plus simply means i is equals to i plus one okay when you're updating the value of i with the previous value okay plus one and then putting the result to the current value of your i or of your variable in python you don't have this i plus plus you don't have this increment the best you could do is this okay you could do plus equals this one plus equals so in that case if i want to increment a value say let's let's have a variable and if i want to put or increment that value equals one and uh, let's print this okay so print the increment so or print update okay update is okay plus equals one x is maybe square so two square x of number your number and then what if i inputted this one okay let's just see if the number will still okay consider the result in this case 2.34e okay it was not 
recognize so there's a value error in this case because there's a character e so if if you put if you put it as an input uh perhaps what you will do is how about the underscore the underscore will have extra character as well so it doesn't work so two three two three four i be two three four underscore zero zero Ah, the underscore in this case was recognized. So let's print num. Okay, so the underscore works in this case if you have a user input. Okay, but the E, because there's a letter E, doesn't work. Okay, so that's nice to know. And again, you could easily explore that in your Py interactive shell. Okay, you could easily explore that. So write the script that receives two numbers okay, from the user and displays the first number raised to that exponent. Okay, uh, well, we could easily uh, write an expression here. Like uh, I have a... And then the base could be... Let's just keep it general. So it's a float value and input a certain number. Okay, import. And after that, let's print. Okay, let's let me just uh, print directly the result. Okay, which is I will just use the power command. Uh, or I could use base and raise to exponent. Okay. So let's try this one. Number. 2 squared. So raise 2 raised to 2 is 4. Okay, exponent uh, is wrong spelling. Okay, let's just run this again. So 2 raised to squared is 4. Okay, pretty much that's it. And uh, find the smallest exponent so that 2 to the e raised to n returns infinity. Okay, this is just uh, exploration on your shell. So say we could have two component, maybe 100, is it? Uh, wait. So two exponent, 100, is it already? Okay, you should, you should not put space. So 2e100, is it already infinity? Not yet. So how about 400? Okay, infinity already. How about 300? So 300 is still good. So 350 is already infinity. So we're just trying to uh, guess this one. Uh, let me half the exponent here with 25. Um, how about <clears throat> 310? Still infinity. So I could go uh, lower. maybe uh 308 or 305 well, let's say 305 okay it's not infinity so 308 infinity uh, probably 307 okay 307 smallest number that did not okay did not return the infinity so write a script that asks the user input. So in this case, I did not ask for a user input. Okay, I simply explored the infinity in the interactive shell. And I found out that, okay, this will give me 307. In which case, it's 2 with 307 zeros. But if I go beyond it, like 8, 308, then Python would already give me infinity. Okay, so that's 307 for you. Uh, rounding off. Okay, we have explored that earlier. So please try it yourself as well. Absolute value 2. Okay, and is integer. So we have explored this earlier already. And uh, I believe you could already handle this one. So just check uh, whether a certain vowel is like 2.3. And then you could 
you could check whether it is an integer okay in, in this case it's false because you have 0.3 <clears throat> So you could also have uh, formatting here, such as uh, print the result of the calculation uh, 7 raised to 0.31. Okay, well, I could, I could just, uh, let me just evaluate this as, as a print statement and uh, let me format it. Okay, evaluate the expression 7 raised to 0.31 space the number and let me just format it okay if you have say if condition so if the age to 18 then you could say uh, print okay uh, then you can enter for example or uh, you are of legal age um okay too young in this case so if we run this code since the value of your variable is already 17 okay you will expect that this will be invalid okay and too young if i change the age to 18 uh, which in this case is already true for the condition okay then you could you could enter so that's the idea the branch is that the choice that you made in the branch is the condition for the age so with your age is greater or equals to 18 and after that there's a decision so when it became true okay you print okay you could enter okay when it became false okay then it's invalid so that's the idea uh, simple enough so i believe you are ready now to check for the drill so post the video and try to solve the drill write a python program that determines whether the number is odd or even well i have mentioned this earlier that you could check a number to be even if the modulo or it's exactly divisible with 2 and that happens if the modulo is 0 is equals to 0 so you could play with that uh, with that distinction already because if it's an odd number the modulo will become 1 so again post the video so if you have solved it already uh, I believe uh, let's let's accept an input now I have a number and let's accept an integer so input say uh, integer uh, modulo for example it check uh, for example username is Sherlock and you have a password uh maybe okay professor for example okay and then you want to check whether you can enter or not so uh, let's do this in okay let, let's do this in a script a compound proposition so you have user okay you have password and then you just want to check now okay whether the is okay and because you need the two conditions to be the same or to be satisfied to be true and password is equals to prof in this case okay then you can enter for example otherwise Okay, you could say else. Uh, let's just print invalid credentials. Okay. okay. 
So in this case, uh, we are accepting. Okay, you are accepting user input now. So at least in this case, you have already distinguished between the interactive shell, which is this case, this is the interactive shell, and this is now the script file. Okay, when I'm writing longer programs, I usually write this, it in the script. Okay, well, if I'm just exploring commands, I usually write it in a Python shell, which is very convenient. So, at least this, that distinction is already clear, I hope. So, control, let's run it again. Username is, let's input a uh, wrong username. Okay, uh, maybe a uh, wrong username could be Superman or something. Okay, password is just just random password. Invalid credentials. So even if we have a correct, okay, let's have a correct username now, but wrong password. So Sherlock. Okay. But let's put a an invalid password, invalid credentials. So you could run it again. So uh, this time around, let's let's give a correct our uh, wrong name and correct password. So if the password is invalid credentials still because the username is wrong. So. In that case, um, let's try a successful, okay, successful en entry. Sherlock, okay, and the password is prof, and you can enter. So that's the idea uh, with a compound. So the idea is there are more than two or more than one, two or more conditions in the same line okay or within the same like if within the same space in the pattern like if and then you have condition that condition is composed of uh, two atomic conditions in that case it's already compound okay so let's try the drill so the drill here is write a Python program that determines whether the age is equal to or over 18 and whether the cache is equal to or over 100, in this case, pesos. So you could check, okay, you could check here whether uh, the age, so I will use the, I will recycle the previous age, uh, the previous input. So I will just put this in my variable age and I will cast it to integer. So this is my for my age. And for cache, for example, let's just assure and let's also cast it to int. And okay, if age is equals to, so I'm just utilizing the pattern. So that happens a lot in the in programming. If if you find a certain pattern, then you will simply retain the pattern because a programming language is formal, so it follows certain patterns. And if you just observe the pattern and replace it refactor the variable in this case it's already an integer so i will uh, compare it with a number which is 18 and if it's greater or equals to 18 and in this case if cash in this case uh, otherwise nope okay so let's just try this again and the pattern is just the same as before with the password. So control B. 
So my age is, for example, 17. And I have cash. Okay, I have 500 in peso. But still, I'm underage. So let's run the program again. How about if I'm over 18? Okay, but I, I don't have my cash with me. So 90 or less? Nope. Okay, let's try the actual correct case where you have you are of legal age to drink beer and you have the cash to do it you can drink okay so simple enough that's the answer with the drill so i hope your solution the solution that you came up with is the same as what we have or similar at least similar so next drill Write a program that examines three variables, X, Y, Z, and prints the list among them. So in this case, it's just a sequence of if condition. So three variables. Let me just assign three values for those. I have X, Y, Z. Python uh, lets you... Uh, assign multiple okay i could use 30 in this case and to check whether okay whether it is the largest i will just use and if say x is the smallest and less is x so if it did not happen if this did not happen Okay, if in the next is great. So in this case, okay, or else, you could say else, the smallest is the middle. Okay, will the code still work? So control B. And indeed, it still works. Okay, what if the smallest number is the last number? Control B. And it still works. And that's all the cases. Because the smallest number could be in the first place, could be in the smaller, or in the second place, the mid, or it could be in the last place. So this could be the solution. If you did the longer uh, compound conditions okay that's also valid okay but you could simplify it to this uh, as well so there are plenty of ways to solve this problem uh, this one being one of them so let's proceed to the next drill okay so in this case um, these are compound conditions now you write a program that examines three variables still xyz but this time it prints the largest odd number okay if none of them are odd number it should print the smallest value of the tree so the logic here is uh, more complicated than before so the idea is okay again post the you could post the video and try the problem yourself if you are able to to print or to deliver the uh, what's required by the exercise so false okay remember that uh, false in python could also be zero or it could be also empty and even none if you did not if you did not initialize a certain variable it is also considered as false or they equate to false so i could check okay i could also check whether the smallest value of the tree if none of them are odd so i could check if the number is odd none is odd by simply coming up with the condition module and and this just provide 
previous numbers earlier. So 10 and maybe 40. So these are all even in this case. So if we print this condition, okay, let's try to explore if you're still confused. This should print because these are all even. This this should print false. Okay? So control B or zero or false. So if one of them is an odd number, okay, like eleven, this will become one or true in this case. Okay, which is exactly what we wanted. So we could use this in our condition. Uh, by the way, if you put a part or a not for the negation, okay, let's clear this one. Okay, control B, and in this case, some are odd. So, if so happens that I will convert it to 10, I could say. All are even. Nice. So, in this case, if all are even, it should print the smallest. So, I could say that all are even. Okay, thus, the smallest. Okay, the smallest is. Okay. And. Okay, there should be a condition. Okay, is uh, for example greater is okay and x is greater than z as well. So if x is odd and it's greater than y, but y should be odd as well. So if it's an odd number, okay, then we could assign is equal. So I could also check the next numbers. So the next numbers, like if y is also an odd number, that means the modulo is 1. Okay, I will check whether y greater Okay, because the condition is largest among them. So it's greater than my initial result, okay, which is the previous number. Then I will update my result. Update my result with it, my y. Okay. And lastly, if the last, okay, that means it, if it's an odd number and is greater than so. So this is a common. And you're just updating it based on the next information that you get. So hopefully we get the correct answer here. So after this, we could print the largest odd number. So you could say print. Uh, the largest number is. Okay, and then comma is where I do this redundant because I already stated it in the print. Okay, all are even, and then this is some are odd. But we can do a default assumption that all are even. But, but okay, row grade, okay, what's the range? 96. So I'm assuming here that uh, the professor could, could give a grade which is greater than 100. Okay, probably due to uh, the bonuses and all. So I could say if it's the grade, row grade is uh, 96. So like you could simply print uh, your grade is for so if it's okay. Okay, if you have a row grade equals and you could print 2.5. So this is really nesting. No. Then the grade is 2.0. 
72. Okay, so this is uh, the last one. So if it's 70, then 1.0, you still passed. Okay, but the default, otherwise, okay, you fail. Grade is 0, 0.0, for example. So uh, it's a pretty long, okay, but the logic is very simple. Uh, the idea is if it's greater than 96, again, I'm assuming that it could be greater than 100. So the grade will be 4.0. Okay, uh, now that's already sliced from your input. You could check whether if it's greater than 92 and you will focus with this range, which is 3.5 and so on. So we could try. Uh, we could try running this. Okay, let's just uh, explore the the input. Say row grade. Okay, currently the row grade is 100. So I expect 4.0. Okay, the grade is 4.0. Okay, as I've said, I expect that it, if there are bonuses, like it could be greater than 100. So in that case, it would still be 4.0. Okay, if it's 97, it, it would still be 4.0. So 97, for example, 97. And it's still 4.0. But if you go lower than 96, like 95, it will already become 3.5 okay if you go very low like below 70 below passing okay you will have a failing grade which is 0, 0.0 if you go somewhere in the middle like 75 can't remember uh, 75 is 1.5 so control b it's 1.5 and that's it that's the solution for the grading uh, using nesting of your condition. And with the power of branching, okay, you could already decide uh, mappings like that. So iteration, okay, this is another control structure for your code, which is more powerful than the conditional. So the idea is with iteration you could repeat your code so if you have a certain condition here if it's true you could continue to run this true statement and then go back to the condition so go back to the condition run the statement and then go back to the condition again so it will be a continuous loop so continuously you will be able to loop from the condition okay to your statement and to the condition again to your statement until the condition becomes false in that case if the condition becomes false then it will already exit your repetition that's the uh, this is really the start where you can feel the power of a programming language because it will make you do stuff like it could search for uh, values from a data containing millions of items so which a human might might find difficult if not impossible so the idea is the computers can efficiently do that with repetition so the format here is you have a while condition for example while followed by a condition and a statement and you have a for loop so for item in a cer certain sequence so the sequence could be a list like uh, one two three four and so on or it could be a tuple or it could be a string in fact so uh, the idea if it's a sequence then you could just iterate okay that's the term you could just iterate so while and for loop have their condition uh, have their uses so usually if okay if you if the ending point of the condition okay like the number of repetition is not clear to you then probably you have to go for a while loop 
However, okay, if that is fixed, the number of repetition is fixed, okay, like you need to repeat it 10 times, then perhaps a for loop is okay, better. Okay, when you can specifically, like for elements in this list, you already know the elements within the list. So repetition is better there. The for loop will be better. Okay, so uh, these two looping statements, although they're very similar, uh, they have specific applications and that you will be able to discover as you gain experience in coding. So in Python, there's a special object uh, known as range. It will it has the capability to uh, generate a sequence of numbers. Okay, let's explore. Let's explore this a bit. So let's explore range a bit. So the idea with range, uh, first, if you want to investigate something, okay, just type help and okay, try to issue the command range. And for the syntax of range, okay, it it accepts. Uh, where's the syntax? The syntax is actually it accepts the. It could either accept one value, like for the stop, and the default starting point will be zero, or it could accept three values as well, or two values is enough. So let's explore this one. Um, if I could come up with a range, say range of, let's let's put it in a for numbers in range in the early. Okay, that will enable the printing. So you could now print the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as expected. So you could also print a sequence of numbers. Okay, like if if you have say 1 to 10. Okay, you want to you print 1 to 10. But you have a twist. You only want the next element the numbers. So print and i and i will get the even numbers two four eight so that's a nice exercise uh, especially if you're just beginning with python learning python just print the odd numbers even numbers print a sequence of numbers i can just play with them and that is the format here item in a sequence so you could also do that in a while loop okay a while loop is also you could also utilize a while loop for that particular uh, purpose like uh, but in a while loop you need a you need to initial initial variable i is okay and then in that case you could print i uh, but be careful you need to update the value of your iterator so i one okay that will update the i value from zero okay to one to two until it reached 10. so if if i do this uh, line of code okay if i run this then i will get one to ten and if i want to print only the odd numbers i could just say modulo say if uh, the modulo just check whether it's equals to zero to sum but the sum okay so accumulating the sum if you have sum zero here and then try to accumulate it within the while loop so it will be able to get the total of the i's which is one up to ten so if you run this one okay, it will give us the correct sum which is 55 so if you have a uh, for loop if you're running the for loop here so i in uh, in this case and get the sum as well so sum or the result okay is it here is plus zero plus okay i uh, so in this case total
Okay, the total is the same as 55. So, in this case, we could also have a Pythonic way of adding the numbers. Okay, like the, if you use the sum function, you could immediately do this by summing up the range. So, you could say sum of the range, which is 1 to 10. And the upper limit is 11. And in that case, it will give you 55. So that's the briefest way of coming up with a total of a sequence. Okay, you could, you could also get the sum of, uh, uh, let's say, even numbers or odd numbers. Okay, step. Okay, you could have even numbers. Again, just, just put the step. So in that case, okay, it's the sum is very simple, simple to do. And factorial, calculate the factorial of a number using iteration. Uh, because if you import math, uh, I think there's a, ma a factorial function for math. Uh, let's try import number, okay, for i equals to, okay, the range of, should be 4 plus 1 uh, because the upper limit is exclusive. So if this is 4 plus 1 or 5, uh, then let me just print the number. Okay, just for information. So indeed, ah, we have 0, so we need to get rid of the 0. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then the result, the, the product equals to initially 1, or this is the result of the factorial. So the factorial, the i, and accumulated to that variable. So lastly, we could just print the factorial of plus 2. So for i range uh, 10, so this will repeat 10 times, and let's just take in, an, so x value is an input, so x is an integer input, And we will check whether it is an odd number. So right, ask the user to input 10 in the teachers, prints the largest of the number, the odd number. And if there's no odd number, it should print. So let's come up with a default number here. Okay, like the default largest so largest odd okay let's say that the default number will be zero okay default number is of the zero is not an odd number so that's the initializing result okay that means no uh, there's no odd number yet so we could come up with a like, is an odd number so modulo 2 uh, is 1 or if that is true what will we do we will update the largest odd number okay we will update the largest odd to the current x so p and n And then I will just assign the max size, the negative of that. So a negative uh, system. Okay, the largest odd was updated. So the odd numbers. Yes. Value, which is equals to uh, the smallest number uh, with respect to the system. And then 
if I come up with a an odd number and it's larger than the smallest number, okay, then I will update my largest odd. And that will be the new largest odd number. So let's let's try to run this code. Okay, control D. So indentation errors for the if statement. Okay. And for the if, uh, I believe okay, let's input uh, numbers. Maybe let's include negative, negative three, uh, maybe add num uh, even numbers, positive nine. Largest will be 11. Let's keep it at 11. And then 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. The largest should be 11. And it's correct. So if if I, if I it so happens I, I never included any odd number, it should print that there are no odd numbers. So let's run. Okay, no odd numbers. So you have 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12, 14, and 16. Okay, there are no odd numbers. So the logic here works. So we have a default number, and then we simply updated it the moment that we come up with a an odd number. And then if it's the largest, largest odd, then we update. Okay, if it's larger than the existing. And then this, this, there's our pro prompt here. After the numbers have been inputted and there's the default is still not updated, then that means that you have not done anything or not, you have not inputted any even numbers. Otherwise, if it is updated, you have found some something. Okay? You have found an odd number. Okay, so that's the uh, solution to, to that drill. Okay, let's delete this one. Nested loops. So we're closing to the end of the session. The nested loops, uh, in this case, is write a Python. So when you have a loop within a loop, so that will be the nested loop. So for example, drill, okay, print a 2D array of asterisk. Uh, again, uh, feel free to stop your... Uh, to stop the video right now for you to be able to just exercise this one i will just give you a hint so the hint is if you are coming up with a loop within a loop so there's a for loop and within its scope there's another for loop or if it is a while loop within its scope there is a loop so that's the idea of having a nested for loop so in this case, if this is a nested for loop, uh, let's start with letter B. Uh, this is easier. So I hope you tried it yourself. The solution is not that hard. So let's just uh, play with this abstract uh, idea, like 2D array of asterisk. So I could say print, okay, print the... Okay, print the star or asterisk character. And uh, before that, we put it in a loop. So for loop for i in range, say maybe five for now. Let's keep it simple. So if you print this one, control B, the idea is it proceeds to a single line. Okay, what if you want to print it in the, just in the same line? Well, if you, if you press help or if you try introspection for the print command, 
you know that you have a separator string here. So the separator here by default, or the end, the end is by default new line. So you could override that end with a blank or a space. Uh, let me override it with a space. So that when I print this, okay, it will print in one line. So that's one way of print uh, of doing it. But we need a 2D array. So this is just 1D array. And it's not that good. Like it's printed with the Python cursor. So let me issue a, a print here. Okay, so it will go to the next line. And another print after. Yeah. So this this will issue it. Okay, let's clarify this one. Control B. And this is now an array, but a single dimensional array. So if I want a two dimensional array within my for loop, okay, then I will come up with another for loop. And in this case, if I if I if I run this, it merely gives me five times five. Or the idea is that five times five is equals to twenty five. Okay, 25 stars or asterisks. So that's the idea here. If you nest a loop, it will be run, depending on the external loop, it will be run n times n times. So if I have 5 here in the external, then it will be multiplied with the internal. So as you could see, we have now a 25 loop. But this is not what we want. Uh, we wanted it to be an array. So what's missing is just the new new line. So we could put uh, after the execution of the inner loop, I could just put a new line. And when I run this, this should give me what I wanted. Okay, which is an array. You could play with this and uh, Perhaps you could set a variable for this, like your n to say 10. Okay, let's substitute n here. And let's print this. Okay, you have a bigger array now of asterisk 10 by 10. So that's how to come up with a 2D array. The 2D array is also... Uh, useful okay using nesting nesting nested loops a loop within a loop to print the multiplication table so this is a usual beginners exercise okay again if you haven't tried it before just post the video and try to print the multiplication table uh, it's just an array of numbers where the intersection will be the result of their multiplication so in this case, um, notice that I'm using the same variable here. Okay, but this is not a good practice because uh, these two variables could interfere with each other. So, so I should have used a different variable in the internal loop. So that, uh, for example, maybe we could print now the product. So if I multiply the two i times j, uh, in this case, it should hopefully give me numbers. Um, okay, it already gives me numbers. Okay, but I don't like the formatting. So it also comes with zero, so I don't like zero. I want to extend up to 10 so I have to improve a bit okay so again you could already guess where I'm going here I will start with one I don't and I will extend this to n plus one okay because it's exclusive n plus one and with respect to the formatting okay let's just print this first just to check what we have 
we have been going so this is what we wanted it's already representing a multiplication table format but the formatting is not good so here we could utilize a special character like the tab character as earlier so you could say we could say let me just format this with the tab evaluate the multiplication and then followed with a tab okay let me just print i uh, let's just get rid of the formatting here so print i so it prints numbers um the reason why i am simplifying it again okay is uh, i want to give a brief description of break break is actually a routine for you to exit your loop so if you issue the keyword break it will exit the loop without proceeding to the next iteration so if initially here uh, in this particular code i'm printing 1 to 10 Okay, if I put break in my for loop, okay, then I will be able to only print one. After that, it exits. So again, the summary for the break is it will exit your loop. Okay, there is another routine with respect to looping is continue. The idea with continue is to skip to the next iteration how how to do it so for example if i want to skip one uh, i don't or maybe four five six i don't want four five six so i could say uh, if okay without printing so a is or i is or is in which we could produce random numbers random integers for example so import okay import random and then if you print random okay a random number uh that i think it's run in okay and you could just put the range say 1 to 10 and it will give you random numbers from 1 to 10 it could be 10 it could be 1 it could be 3 and so on okay so with that okay we will be able to solve the drill problem here create a dice rolling program that continues to roll until the user decides so until the user decides you don't know when will the user decide not to not to play so for loop is not good here while loop will be better because you don't know the exact number of iterations so while loop will be utilized here again Feel free to post your video and try this problem. So it's just a single while loop. Just an exercise for your skill. Okay, so if if you have posted it and tried your solution, okay, we could compare your solution to mine. We could say, in my case, I will just I will just use is play. Mm, okay, the variable will be s play and then i will or let's just keep it as a string okay maybe y okay play equals to your y just so happens if the user will use a small letter we could convert it into upper so upper will simply convert it into uppercase so we could also issue y it's like saying or small letter y so while play okay you you try to produce numbers for dice size one and say random so let's import random here 
three. Just use a different character. Dice two. Y. A small letter Y. Uh, any string to quit. Uh, let's let's just say otherwise quit. I need a better formatting. So uh, any character will quit it. So okay, let's run this. So type Y. So in this case, the first. Uh, why is this one two? Maybe there's a while loop somewhere. Uh, here. Need to delete this one first. Okay, so type in this case dice is the first die is one, second die is give us a six, and then type type y to continue. So in this case I will simply continue, and as you can see, the numbers here are randomized. So you have two and one. Continue, fix entry, continue, and so on until you quit. And that's a very simple program. Okay, so lastly, our last beginner's exercise for the day. Okay, will be write a number guessing game. So let's guess a number within 100, 1 to 100. You provide the feedback. So the computer will come up with a random number and you as the player <clears throat> will guess. So the idea is <clears throat> if it's higher, if the number is higher, you will just say higher or lower if indeed the random number is lower. Okay, so you could just come up with uh, this is our last drill. So, again, import the random number. So, while loop is better here. While the number is, say, not equal to. Okay, uh, while number. Okay, while number. Okay, well, it's not equals to, so you'll have an initial number and initial guess. So maybe my initial guess will be another system. Guess. Okay, continue this one. Uh, maybe I will ask uh, print the user. Okay. Uh, let's input. Uh, the input will be stored to your guess. The user is just input a number. Or input your guess. Okay, input. And within the range okay and then just a simple if else so if you provide it is greater to provide feedback to the user the current guess is higher or lower this two if guess is higher your guess is higher You guess my number feedback, which is which number it is. Okay, so I think this is already fine. Your guess is greater. So let's try this code. Okay, let's run this. Control.
can put your guess. Mm, I'll try the half. Okay, the binary method. So uh, let me guess the half, which is 50. Okay, type error not supported. Ah, okay, I forgot to get the in. Okay, let's do that. Control B. So 50. Your guess is greater than my number. Half of 50 is 25. Still greater. So half of 25 is about 12. Smaller. Okay, so plus 6. Let me have 18. Smaller. Okay, plus 3. Let me have 21. Greater. So it could be 20. Your number could be 20. Your number could be 19 or definitely 19. I already guessed 18. So your number, I got you, your number is 19. <laughs> okay, so that's it. So it works. Just a simple game. And with this uh, particular logic in a while loop, then you could come up with plenty of interesting uh, programs. Uh, I believe that ends our first session. Okay, thank you and see you in the next uh, next installment.